an elite group of chefs holds two Michelin stars. Michel Roux Jr. is one of them. Now. now he and Master Chef Judge Greg Wallace are on the hunt for Britain's next culinary superstar. A professional with the talent to cut it in the world's top kitchens. Perfect. Ten professional chefs have faced their first challenge to prove to Monica Galletti that they can cook at the highest level. Now, they've been split into two groups. Today, four will face the final test to decide who is good enough to cook for Michelle Roux Jr. At the end of it, one of them will be going home. The pressure today is going to be intense, but you've got to feed off that and turn it into to just loving it, buzzing, just go out there and do your best, because you only get this opportunity once. I didn't expect the standards to be high, I just didn't expect them to be this high. I'd be a liar if I said I wasn't in it to win it, because everyone's here to win. Skills test, one of my favourite bits. What have you got for them? Today, Greg, I'd like them to prepare the sea bass, remove the bone, but keep it whole. And then I'd like them to use this separate fillet to make a fish tartare. In any professional kitchen, preparing fish is a must. So I expect them to know what they're doing today. First, I'm going to scale the fish. I'm using this bag so the scales are not going to go everywhere. I'm using the back of a knife, but you should be able to use a fish scaler as well. Rinse the fish down to remove any other scales that I've missed. Next step, remove everything that's extra on the fish. Now I'm going to cut into the fish and remove the bone. See the fins here along the top? So you want to go just above it and angle the knife in and you'll be able to feel the bone as you're cutting into that fish and that's your guideline. So you've got to be really careful that your knife point doesn't split the skin. Yes, you do not want to pierce the fish at all. Any stuffing that you're going to have will just leak. You let the bones guide you. Remove the bone out as a whole. That should come out loosely. And it's just pulled out. Remove the gills. We want to keep the head on. Head on, eyes out, everything else out. Give it a rinse. Any professional chef should know they have to pin bone fish. Michelle is not a great fan of fish bones, I tell you that. And that's it, our fish ready to be stuffed. Next, I'm going to make the fish tartar. So first, always check, make sure there's no bone in that fish. Take it straight off the skin. You just want to hold on to that and just pull the skin and the fillet will come off on its own. You want to thinly slice that fish. You don't want to be chewing a big chunks of fish. Into the bowl it goes and the rest will be down to palate. Olive oil. That's right. And I'm just very simply putting it into this ring. Micro fennel and mustard frills. Very simply on the top of that. I'm just going to finish with the oil on the top. That speaks to my inner depth, that does. That is lovely. And last, remove the ring. Here we have it, Greg. The deboned fish ready for stuffing and my fish tartar. This is a great test, Greg. It's about accuracy, tasting, knife skills. Let's get them in. First up is head chef Sean, who has cooked in the army for 23 years. In the first invention test, he wowed the judges with a Stilton tart and glazed apples. I'm here because I'm coming to the end of my career in the army and I want to continue in the catering industry. You know, to have the trophy of MasterChef in a cabinet in your own restaurant would be absolutely fantastic. Sean, it's a skills test. What we'd like you to do is prepare 
and bone that sea bass ready for stuffing, keeping it whole. And then with the separate fillet, we'd like you to make us a tartare. We're going to give you just 15 minutes. OK. You ready, Sean? Yeah. Off you go. You've had five minutes. Last 60 seconds, we need that on a plate, Chef. Just in the nick of time. So the pressure's on there. That's a challenge and a half, that. The tartar is a decent, clean-looking plate. Let's taste. I like all the combination of flavours, but you've just put too much lime in there. At the beginning, as soon as you looked at the fish, when we told you what your task was, you did look afraid. However, you did a great job managing to take the bone out even though you've gone the opposite end of the fish. You took the gills out, you took the eyes out, scaled it perfectly, trimmed it down. And, you know, you show skills as a chef to try and follow those bones and try not to damage the fish as much as possible. It, it's not a bad effort. Sean, thanks very much. Thank you. She was immense in there. To do two things at once in 15 minutes and execute a dish on a plate as well, was that was intense pressure. Twenty-one-year-old David is a junior sous chef at a hotel and is currently on the pastry section. His deconstructed crumble with almond sponge was a big hit. Cooking is my life. There's nothing better to me than having a nice meal, cooking a nice meal, trying out new things. I eat, sleep, drink, cooking, really. All yours, David. 15 minutes, off you go. Quick. Five minutes left. Sixty seconds to stick it on that plate. <sighs> I 
Yeah, those 15 minutes go quick, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Right, David, let's start with the sea bass. You scaled it into the bag. Well done. You've trimmed all the fins off. You pin boned the fish. The only thing you haven't done is taken the gills out. You've also gone in through the belly. Uh, what you should do is go through the back. But, David, it's not a bad attempt. We're going to look at your tata. I think the grated zest of the lime on top of that was, was inspired. The smell is lovely. Very good job. I enjoy watching you work. You taste as you season and you flavour. It is lovely. So well done, big fella. Thank you. The amount of time they give you to do that is just unreal, so... But I'm not feeling too bad. It, it went a lot better than I thought it would. Kim is a senior sous chef in a luxury hotel in London and has been working in kitchens for 11 years. Last time, the taste of her food impressed the judges more than the appearance. For me, it's always about being better and getting better and becoming that great chef you want to. I want to be recognised. I want to be a head chef at a great restaurant in London and hopefully have my own one day, which, which will be great. Kim, 15 minutes, off you go. Thank you. You've had five minutes. Three minutes left. Last minute. We're going to have to push you here. Right, time's up. Time's up. Kim, let's start with the, the fish. You started off with scaling the fish, well done. However, you forgot to trim it down, remove the gills and the eyes as well, okay? You must also remember to take out any pin bones that are long on the inside. When you do take the bone out, you should go through the back, okay? okay? Now, you can see in there, you should never leave all this in the actual fish. Right, let's look at your tata. As soon as I got it near my mouth, I breathed in broken onion smell. Spring onions are powerful little allium. Yeah. I like the chilli dressing you've made. However, I wish at one point you would have stopped to taste. Kim, thank you. Off you go. Thank you very much. My nerves in there, it really gets to you inside. You know, your heart's racing a thousand beats a minute, and for me, I felt it. At just 20 years old, sous chef Rob has already won the Ludlow Young Chef of the Year Award. In the last round, Rob's presentation let down an otherwise impressive dish of pork with liver ravioli. Cooking is everything to me. You think about it 24 seven. If you slip me open, you see a cookbook pop out. <laughs> 
Rob, 15 minutes, off you go, chef. You've had five minutes. Sort of leave it as that and get onto the tartar? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Three minutes left. It's all right. I don't think we've had a winner of each competition that hasn't cut himself. Yeah, but they've managed to do everything successfully, though, haven't they? Two minutes left, Chef. Ten seconds. We need the ring off the plate. We need it finished, please. <sighs> Complete and utter rubbish. I've never done either of them before. Didn't do the fish proud like I wish, wish I did. You did your best to try not to damage this fish. However, what you should have done first, scale that fish, trim it down, remove the eyes, remove the gills from the inside. It's the rule of thumb of preparing fish. Um, also, once you've been in the inside here, you need to also take the pin bones out. But at least wash it. But in saying that, you've still managed to, to keep the fillets pretty much undamaged. Knife skills, you know, you, you, you cut yourself using the wrong knife. As to making your tartare, you took the fillet straight off the skin, but also make sure there's no bones in that fish. It's nicely seasoned, tastes good, tastes decent. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, mate. whether they think that I've got something in me for them to give me that chance. Our four today had never boned out a whole sea bass. They all managed to remove that bone, but it was done through the belly. No one managed to take it out from the back end of the fish. Sean was very, very nervous. He did everything that he knew how to do right and then attempted the rest of the task. He managed to get all the bones out of that sea bass. Also, he cut all the fins off, descaled it properly, cut the eyes out as well, and the gills. He was pretty good. His tartar is, for me, what let him down the most today. He put too much lime in it. It was a few little things, uh, minor errors there that I, I need to tweak, and I'll take them forward, and if I'm lucky enough to go through, then, you know, I, I can only improve myself. David, I really like him. He scaled the fish properly and he did attempt to pin bone the fish. David made the best tartar for me today. It was a bit heavy on the chilli, but I like hot food. I like the way that he worked today. I definitely could have done the fish a lot, a lot more justice than what I did instead of hacking it up a bit, but I tried. I tried my hardest, so. Kim scaled a fish, however, forgot to remove the gills, the fins, the eyes. Again, she had took the bone out through the belly and then when she had done that, she didn't pin bone as well. And her tartar was decent, but it had big chunks of spring onion in, which was wrong. It went OK. I just uh, messed up on a few things. Rob was scared. I mean, he stabbed himself in the finger, he was so scared. 
He managed to get all the bones from his sea bass, but he even forgot to scale the fish. He knows how to scale and to trim the gills and everything down. He knows to remove the innards out. He just lost it. His tartar he made tasted good, well seasoned. And it was finely chopped. I want to win this, and I reckon I do have the chance of winning it if I get the chance to cook for them the food I, I can cook. We've got the opportunity to put all four through if we want. I think Rob was probably the weakest out of the four, but I don't believe he did that disastrously badly that he shouldn't get another chance. To put Rob through to cook for Michelle is a big risk, and it worries me. All I'm asking is you chuck him a lifeline. We have discussed at great lengths who to put through to cook for Michelle. It has not been easy for me. We have decided all four of you should get the opportunity to go and cook for Michelle. However, one or two of you need to prove that you deserve to be there. Well done. Congratulations. Rob, hey. you can breathe now, man. <laughs> I didn't think I deserved to go through, and just this lifeline comes through. Where's Con describe how I feel? It's amazing. There are classics that should be part of every professional chef's repertoire. And Michelle Rue Jr is looking for chefs who aspire to cook them at his two Michelin star level. For today's classic recipe, I want the chefs to cook a classic chocolate and raspberry tart. Chocolate is indulgent and special. It has to tick all the boxes of a great dessert, the ultimate pleasure, and it has to look beautiful. It has to scream out, eat me. First job, the sweet pastry. Sifted flour, the soft butter, in the center, along with the sugar. The egg yolk, a tiny pinch of salt. Now, we start to bring in the flour, using the fingertips, a delicate touch. So once you have achieved this kind of a, a sandy texture, now you take the palm of your hand and you're pushing away, and this is not kneading, but it's bringing the dough together. I did my apprenticeship at the age of 16, learning how to make beautiful pastries in a shop in Paris. It takes years of experience. That's it, that's the consistency we want. Wrapped in cling film so that it doesn't get any crusts and doesn't dry out. That goes in the fridge quickly. Now we need to get the ganache on. So the liquid glucose goes into the pan with cream brought up to the boil. Take the pan off the heat. We incorporate the bitter chocolate and the butter. This makes a really beautiful, rich, shiny ganache. So we can leave that there. And we'll come back to it later. 20 minutes later, the sweet paste should be set and ready to roll. The pastry should be about two millimeters thick. So now I'm going to put this in the oven to bake at 180 degrees centigrade. Uh, for about 15, 20 minutes, it has to be fully cooked. Now, the base is cool, and we can put our raspberries in here. Chocolate ganache. Mmm. Shake it a bit. That's it. So now, quickly into the blast chiller or the fridge to set. I don't want it solid. When I cut into it, it has to be soft. This is a dessert. It has to be beautiful. They've got to give us some kind of decoration with the chocolate. I want to see the chef's creativity. I want to see them give me one chocolate decoration.
There we have it. Bitter chocolate tart with raspberries and a beautiful imaginative decoration. That's what I want to see from the chefs. It's every chef's dream to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. It's an amazing opportunity. I just want to show him what I've got. Nervous, excited, so many emotions are in my head at the moment. I don't know what to do, cry, laugh, jump. I mean, the West Chef whites, it's a great honour to be wearing these whites. I just got to produce the goods now. You may have found this competition a little bit tough, but let me tell you, this is where the cooking really starts. All great chefs understand pastry. You are going to be cooking a tarte chocolat aux framboises. I am expecting great things from this recipe. To be a great chef, you have to understand pastry work. You've got an hour and 10 minutes, off you go. Every time that you do come back to cook, then yes, you do have to prove something. You always have to be better than the last time, and that's what I'm here to do. Right, Kim, do you understand this classic recipe? I do, yes. Are you classically trained? No. What about pastry work? It's one of my weakest points I have. I like desserts a lot. Um, we all like desserts. Of course, but... Some more than others. <laughs> but I want to prove to you that I can do this. And how do you feel about the competition? It's a lot of pressure, yeah. Well, it's been quite intense, I must say. Do you push yourself? Are you tough on yourself? I am, yeah. Kim hasn't worked in pastry, but she understands the recipe, understands the principles, and knows that we want beautiful presentation. You've had 15 minutes. Kudos for cooking for Michelle Junior now is in the, you know, the stakes have been raised immensely. If I get one positive comment, then I'll be happy, really happy. Right, Sean. Chef. How are you with uh, pastry work? <laughs> this is not my favourite subject, Chef. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is my sort of weakest area and something that I really need to concentrate on. So, uh, not. Not trained in pastry at all? Or? Not a trained pastry chef, no. I would have thought with the military, I mean, uh, that. That would be part of the cooking training. During the training process, they give you some very classical skills, um, some classic flavours. We then take them out into the field army. We then use them, them basic skills, then to progress. And we have a little bit of free reign. With all the opportunities open to you when you join the army, why did you pick up a saucepan? My father was a chef. He was a chef in the army. He actually tried to talk me out of being a chef. And he wanted to see if I had the heart and the dedication. You know, I, I stepped into sort of the field army kitchen at 16 years old, and I've been there ever since. Sean has overcooked his chocolate and I worry that his ganache is not going to have that lovely shine that I expect. You've had 30 minutes. I'm confident in my abilities, yeah, but I also think that being 20, I'm not quite the finished package yet and I want to learn and I want to hopefully Michelle Roux and Greg can point me in the right direction. Right, Rob, you are right with this classical recipe? Sweet tart, really my strong point at all. Well, it doesn't seem like anything that's been my strong point at all the last couple of days. 
So this this recipe is new to you and Yeah, I've made like obviously chocolate tarts before, but it's just ganache filling is new to me, so I've never done it before. What started you cooking in the first place? I grew up in my dad's restaurant from the age of eight till about ten. Get the vibes, it's the noise, it's everyone shouting and blurting at each other. It's just something that you know gets a little shivers up your spine. is already well behind on the timings. I'm worried that that tart not only won't be cooked, but won't be set in time. I think my strength is being very adaptable in the kitchen. And a lot of people don't know pastry or like pastry, which is, is a plus in my side because I like pastry a lot. David, do you understand this classic recipe? I do, yes. Uh, I make chocolate tarts quite often. You're a dab hand at the pastry uh, work? I work in the pastry quite often, but I find it more challenging than the other parts of the kitchen, so... So how did you feel when you came in and saw this recipe? When I first saw raspberries, I was like, wow, we're going to be cooking a dessert today. Good. Without telling everybody else what you're going to do, chocolate tempering or, or chocolate work? I guess you're just going to have to wait and see it till later. Good, I like that. Well, I like to see a big smile on, the, on a chef's face. <laughs> David has got an eye for presentation. He is tempering chocolate, he is making a different ganache, he's made coolie. He's got so much going on, and he looks so confident. It's great. It's your last 10 minutes. Classic pastry dessert, tarte chocolat aux framboises, a chocolate tart with raspberries. The chocolate tart should be beautifully presented. The pastry itself should be cooked through and crispy. There must be some form of chocolate milk. Kim? We're going to start with you. Kim, very simple decoration there. That big teardrop of coolie, but it works. It's very neat, very precise. Your chocolate ganache in the tart has set just on time. It looks soft. It's just holding, uh, but that's good. It's not neat, though, uh, and that's because you cut the raspberries in half and just threw them at the bottom there. Chocolate shavings on top, which is good. That's easy chocolate work, but you've, you've done them neatly and nicely. Tastes really good, could look a bit sharper. Pastry could be crisper. The base of the tart is not quite cooked enough. Your chocolate ganache is nice and silky smooth and shiny. The coolie is lovely. This is a good attempt. It's really not far off the classic recipe. But I would have liked a little bit more chocolate work. You know, for someone that doesn't do pastry then, I thought I did OK. I was going for the presentation, which I wanted a clean plate, and I thought that's what I gave across. David. Let's have a look at yours. David, you're quite obviously here trying to show off your skills. The chocolate work on here is very good. A lovely chocolate curl. Good.
the base of your chocolate tart is fully cooked. The ganache, it's like two minutes away from setting properly. That really is the only criticism I have on your dessert because I think it's great. I love that other ganache you made, the lighter one with the cream. That is, that is heaven. I could have had that by the ladle full. Although, I think you've overdone it with the amount of raspberry on that slice. I got a few compliments on my plate, so it's a good thing. Sean, your turn. Not quite up there with the best desserts I've, I've seen, but pretty impressive. There's a crunch to your pastry. <laughs> Chocolate is lovely, uh, not too sweet, lovely and rich. My only complaint is I'd like a little bit more raspberry along the bottom. Sean, I love your presentation. Very neat, precise, dare I say, military fashion. Thank you. You've done some sugar work, which is brilliant, very clever. Your chocolate ganache is shiny. I noticed you were beating the ganache there to make it come back together because it had split, and I think you've managed to bring it back. The pastry is well cooked, it's crunchy, not too thick. The chocolate ganache has set only just. I like your little chocolate curls there on top to give texture. I really like this. You've done a very good job here. Thank you, Chef. I think I did very well. Pastry is not my forte, so I stuck with what I know. Whether it works or not, I didn't know. That was the big key. Rob, let's have a look at yours. You've made a nice, bright coulis. We've got a slice of fine chocolate work, but of course, your, your tart hasn't set. Well, the flavours are there. You've made a lovely cooling. There's sharpness and sweetness that's a wonderful match for the rich cocoa chocolate. But it's not a tart. It's like a chocolate sauce. I do like the fact that you did attempt some chocolate work and that you've, you've got a, a piece of chocolate strip there. That shows that, yeah, you're, you're willing to give it an effort. Your coolie's good, nice and shiny not too sweet. The ganache is good. It's shiny. It's just not set. Pastry base, I can't really judge it because it's not cooked. I looked a big time. Next test is your choice of a classic recipe. This is your last chance to show us what you've got. I expect perfection. You've got one hour to make a memorable dish. Off you go. I'm feeling pretty confident about the next challenge. I mean, the recipe I've chosen is quite dear to my heart. I've created this recipe myself, so if I don't execute it properly, then I'll be beating myself up about it quite badly. David, what classic dish are you cooking for us? I'm going to be doing a creme brulee with uh, maple sable biscuits and a milk chocolate mousse. Surprise, surprise. A dessert? Yeah. It's a creme brulee pecan and 
So basically, it's a milk chocolate creme brulee, and I'm not going to be glazing it in a traditional method, but I feel as though I can still politically call it a creme brulee when I've got caramel on top. This is just a pecan caramel. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be sprinkling this on top instead of burning it. I just want to show you that I can do something different and put a twist on something. What does it mean to you to get through to the quarterfinal? It means everything to me, you know. It's, it's my career on the line. I'm still so young. How old are you? I'm 21 years of age. Are you? Yeah. Call your age in badly. I oh, know. I've been told that many times. Hard work, that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. It makes you age. It does. You have got very little time to make your dessert amazing. Yeah. Get cracking. Thank you. David says he's going to present his creme brulee in a different way. Well, it had better be very good, because the classic creme brulee, for me, is the perfect dessert. Fifteen minutes already gone. I think this dish is going to highlight, for me, what kind of chef I am. Uh, very seasonal, very classic, very traditional. And just having a dish that, you know, looks the wow factor and does taste the wow factor. Right, Kim, what classic recipe have you chosen to cook? I've chosen to do the lamb wellington. I'm going to do it with some carrot and cardamom puree and fresh gerol mushrooms. What's the chicken for? Chicken, I'm, I'm going to make a little mousse and put the morels with the mousse and then the pancake and then the puff pastry on the outside. Wow. So quite laid up. Obviously, I want to get lots of flavour in there. It's coming with a sauce? Uh, it's going to have, like, a little light jus of uh, lamb, which I'm going to put the gerol mushrooms through that. Why would you put yourself through the terror <laughs> and pressure of MasterChef? Pressure is what all chefs live for, I think, and I love it. For me, being a chef is all go, 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 and, you know, you have to have that inside you, and I think I do. The secret to a great Wellington is that the meat is cooked and that the pastry is crisp. I just hope that Kim can achieve that. We've reached halfway. It's only half an hour left. The first time I cooked this dish was about six months ago, practicing for a, an internal military competition. There's been a few you know, bits of advice I've been given, and I've got a couple of elements on my dish that I really have to pay attention to. So, on what classic recipe are you cooking? It's not so much a, maybe a classic recipe, but classic flavours. And the reason I've chosen it with three classic sort of skills, really. My recipe I'm doing today is uh, pan fried rainbow trout uh, with sauce vegetables and I'm doing a watercress tower with a slight twist, a savoury egg custard, but mainly with the watercress is the, the flavouring through that. Doing a little bit of a modern twist for myself, I'm putting a bit of a beetroot caviar, and then just serving it simply with a bit of creme fraiche. What custard did you say you would... I'm doing a, a savoury egg custard, so a watercress flavour. Watercress though. custard. Right, you loony. <laughs> no wonder we lost the empire. <laughs> well, there's a lot of technique on show. I just hope you get it all right. Thank you, sir. The flavours of Sean's dish should be a perfect harmony. Slightly bitter, sweet, pickle vegetables should work perfectly with the fish. I'm not sure about the beetroot pearls. What is that going to bring to the dish? The classic dish I've chosen, it is a classic, and it's also got a little wow factor to it. I do think I can deliver a perfect dish. I think that's what I need to do to impress Michelle Rodinia. Right, Rob, what classic recipe have you chosen? I've chosen um, papillotes of Jean Dory. We have turned potatoes, braised baby gem lettuce, and a um, saffron and shallot butter. So, in this instance, you are wrapping the fillet of Jean Dory in greaseproof paper and baking it? Yes. And yes. you're hoping that the bag is going to be puffed up? Nice and puffed up, yeah. But when you open it, you get the lovely vapours of the fish? Yep. There's quite a bit for you resting on the outcome of this dish, isn't it? I do this right or I go home. Simple, I've looked up on the last time. I want you to see what I'm all about. As a chef, you want cooking your dish to be a part of you on that dish. Mm -hmm. If I don't do that, it's just, I'll be a boring old chef, I might as well work in a greasy spoon. And you don't want to be a boring old chef? Oh, no. The 
perfect papillot has to be puffed up with the steam coming from the fish. If it's wrapped too tight, then it'll just overcook the fish and be soggy. Last five minutes. Guys, right, get it on those plates. Stop. <sighs> First up is David. His classic dish is a milk chocolate creme brulee topped with a pecan nut caramel and served with maple sablé biscuits and milk chocolate mousse. First off, it's not what I would call a creme brulee in a parfait jar. I'm more used to seeing pâtés in parfait jars, but if it's a good one, why not? Shortbread biscuits are delicious. You can just about get that maple syrup in there too. I think it's very, very good. Your milk chocolate mousse as well, I think, is, uh, is delicious. I like your idea of making the caramel with the pecan nuts, making a crumb of it and putting it on top. That, for me, is a dessert. It's where it stops, I'm afraid, for me. I don't like your chocolate creme brulee. I don't like the texture. I'm not sure about the balance of this dish, though. It's just milk chocolate and milk chocolate. It's a crazy-looking pudding. <laughs> it's, it's, in it's making me smile. Yeah. I think it's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> it's sticky and chocolatey and maple syrup and, and nuts. I mean, it's, it's lovely. I mean, really, really lovely. But all of it together is too much even for me. You know, and I'm a self-confessed sugar chocoholic. I definitely should have put something else acidic on there or a bit bitter. The dish was way too sweet. I should have, should have thought it through properly. Kim has cooked lamb wellington. A twist on the classic beef wellington, layered with a chicken and girol mushroom mousse, pancake and puff pastry. She is serving it with a carrot and cardamom puree and a rosemary choux. First off, I think it looks really nice. I love the fact that the puff pastry looks cooked all the way through, crispy, and it's shiny. You've egg washed it. Hmm. The lamb for me is ever so slightly overcooked. Saying that, it's still moist. The pancake has absorbed all the humidity and all the, the natural juices of the lamb and meant that the pastry is nice and crisp. Your lamb jus I find a little bit too strong in rosemary. Carrot puree is beautifully seasoned, nice and silky smooth, and you can just get a hint of that cardamom in there, which is really nice. As a whole, I like this dish. Thank you very much. I think this dish is showing a lot of skills. It's more than I was expecting from a Lang Wellington. I think it's, it's very good. The Wellington itself, I think, is absolutely beautiful. Slightly overcooked for, for some people, one side of the channel. Us over here on these beautiful windswept islands, we, we, we find it cooked very well indeed. But it looks incomplete to me. I'm looking around for some potatoes. I'm looking around for a, maybe a portion of spinach. Michelle Rue Jr. said that my dish was this close to perfection. And for him to say that to me, I am absolutely over the moon. For his classic, Sean has pan seared a rainbow trout fillet and served it with soused or pickled vegetables and a watercress custard topped with beetroot caviar. The colors are beautiful. Really, really exciting, vivacious colours. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Your soused or pickled vegetables are delicious. Works beautifully well with the fish. I love that watercress 
pepperiness with the fish. It works beautifully. Combinations of flavours there are great. The beetroot, pearls or caviar are very well done, but they taste of really not a lot. This is very good choice of ingredients and well cooked. You're showing off a lot of skills. That dish is beautiful. Some great cooking and some great taste on that plate. Thank okay. you. Go over with a smile on your face. How much of a smile am I? <laughs> Overall, I think my presentation was really good and Michelle really commented on that, so I'm happy with that. But yeah, I think I could have executed other flavours on the plate a lot better. Rob's classic dish is John Dory with saffron and sweet peppers cooked en papillot, served with braised baby gems, turned potatoes, and a saffron and shallot butter. First off, your papillot is a little bit scruffy because your papillot isn't puffed up and isn't the right shape. The colours, when you open up that papillot, it really looks appetising, looks wonderful. Your choice of ingredients is really nice, it's colourful. The cooking is very good, because the fish is really moist. The idea behind it is great. Maybe some lemon rind or orange rind to give it that kick, give it a boost. I'd happily eat all of that. I think it's cooked really, really well. Soft potatoes, soft fish. Good cooking. I think you proved the point. I'm really happy with what I did. I couldn't have, you know, cooked any better than I did. The fish was cooked perfectly. I reckon I have done myself justice. What a fantastic couple of tests. Nothing brightens my day more than good cooks with good cooking. I started off with an enormous pile of chocolate and finished with an enormous pile of chocolate. <laughs> I had a great day. Great cooking, lots of passion, lots of skill, everything that I was expecting. Sean's attempt at my classic chocolate tart I thought was very good. His pastry was cooked to perfection and his decoration was spot on. It looked great. Sean's classic recipe was a rainbow trout pan fried with soused or pickled vegetables and a custard made with watercress. He then made us some beetroot caviar, which were expertly done, but lacked in flavor. They didn't bring anything to the dish other than little specks of color. Apart from that, I can't see any reason why that guy, Sean, should not march <laughs> a soldier like straight into a quarter final because he is a force to be reckoned with. I think we've got to put Sean through. Michelle and Junior had some really positive comments from it, and, and obviously, I'll take on board the comments where I need to improve. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic, really. Kim's chocolate tart was far from perfect. The pastry was undercooked, but Kim's ganache was really shiny uh, and the right texture. Also, it had set properly. I loved Kim's Wellington. Tasted wonderful, and that lamb was cooked fine for me, absolutely fine. The flavours were brilliant. That chicken mousse with the morels and the fact that she'd put a pancake meant that the puff pastry cooked and it was crisp and really tasty. I think Kim has got all-round qualities, enough to take her through to the next round. I so do not want to be going home today. Uh, I hope I have done enough to stay in the competition. Sean through most certainly, Kim through, all right, fair dues. I agree. Uh, that means we've got to decide between the, t the two young fellas. David, his decoration of his chocolate tart was very good. So obvious, obvious talent there. A very accomplished dessert, but spoilt by the fact that the actual tart was runny. I really loved his chocolate creme brulee, but the milk chocolate mousse that he'd made was very similar. It was far too chocolatey, too creamy, too moussey, too sweet. 
I really don't want to go home. I really don't because I've, I feel as though I've got a lot more to show than what I've, what I've done today. Rob had the worst chocolate tart up at the bench. In fact, he never really managed the chocolate tart, did he? He had a chocolate puddle on pastry. On uncooked pastry. If we'd have stopped this challenge after the chocolate tart, Rob would have been on his way home, but we didn't. And I thought Rob redeemed himself completely with his fish on papillot. I thought Rob's fish looked really colourful and it was a very brave attempt uh, to cook a fish on papillot. If they see something in me that they want to take through to the next round, brilliant. Um, if not, I'll, I'll be absolutely gutted. I'm not convinced by Rob. But then, I've only seen David cook pastry. I'd like to say I thought today was great. Really good standard, which has made this judging extremely difficult. It's never easy, but we have made a decision. And the chef leaving us is... Rob. Feeling better. I take away, you know, obviously the positives, but also got to do a lot of work. I have a lot more to learn. I'm still young. I'm only 21. No, it's not the end. You'll see me again. We're just not a master chef. Congratulations, you three are quarter finalists. <laughs> Well done. So happy. Gonna get all tearful as well. You know, I'm very excited, very excited. Happy. Well, making the quarterfinal now I can show off hopefully more skills, not only you know, for myself, but you know, the boys in green out there. Uh, see that, you know, I'm, I'm still here. Going through means everything to me now. You have not seen the best of me. I haven't even got started yet. Next time, Sean, Kim and David will join three other Heat winners in the quarter-final. Our chefs cannot afford to play it safe. Now's the time to really excel. Only the best will go on to cook for the critics in a bid for a coveted semi-final place. I like chocolate. I hate this. This is as near as it comes to a faultless dish.